in our kingdom, we outlaw all glass slippers. And fur slippers, too, since the original Grimm Brothers translation meant fur in German. Be quiet, dear. Sorry. <laughs> Furthermore, we outlaw all dwarves, especially ones with strange names like Sneezy or Doc. Good show. Doug. Sorry, dear. And anyone whose last name is Charming, you're out of the kingdom too. That goes for Valiant or anyone who might be construed as a handsome. Yes, no handsome men left at all. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, we won't have any happily ever after yards told in the kingdom. That's very important. If you've got a story that ends in happily ever after, you can take it to the next kingdom down the road. But mother and father, why are you doing all of this? To keep you away from a nasty little thing called love. Oh yes, it's horribly nasty. What's so nasty about love? Oh, it's terrible. Makes him marry people like him. Or her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you love Rowan, you'll marry for money and only when I've met you with the richest prince I can buy. But until you do, I'm keeping you in that tower. Someday you'll thank me. You're the worst father ever! Yeah, yeah. Kiss my foot. <laughs> <laughs> That's so important. Princess Duke is stuck in the time tower with no more escape. Until one day, the young man, a handsome young man, his name is not charming or valiant, but drink. <laughs> no way. I got to send the king of this guy. So, I'm not a prince. I'm not a lord either. What are you then? A sir. You are a sir. And you hope to marry a beautiful princess? Well, I'm a poet, sir. A poor poet, sir. Hey, I can dream of you, guy. Very well. I can't sell but a poor young poet. Oh, great vision of beauty. How exquisite you are. Oh, tell me more. Your face is really deep and pretty. Your eyes are two beautiful pools of blue, and your beautiful red lips are two beautiful lines of red. The good sir trainer wasn't particularly polite. <coughs> what do you expect? I'm a sir. Nevertheless, the princess felt that we're guilty in love with them. Oh, my hero. Can you get me down from here? Certainly, good vision. But how? I don't know, find a ladder or something. Oh, that, right! And so the poor poet Sir Drano went to hide above the land in search of the ladder. But the princess's father, being full of in fairy tales, had destroyed them all. That's all right. I'll find myself a thick, sturdy rope. Except all sold to the land across the sea. A few dozen of your veggies? Outlawed and vanished. A cabin? Burn. A spring? I invented yet. That's it! I'll have someone invent a spring! Good luck finding an inventor. Bless. And so the poor poet Sir Drano sat and thought, and thought, and thought. But he couldn't think of a single way to release the princess from the tower. This stinks. You're telling me. I know. Why don't we find a sorceress and see if she can change you into something? You know, a small animal, a mist of vapor, <coughs> something that can slip into the tower. Gee, I don't know. Oh, come on. It works in all the fairy tales. I never read a fairy tale. Your father had the most fan. I know. But before he had the man, I read a bunch. And there was this one where this handsome prince was changed into an ugly frog. But once the princess kissed the frog, voila, the prince instantly appeared. And they looked happy ever after. You mean you kissed me? You made me the happiest man in the world. Just try and change into something cute. I don't want to kiss you and get warts or creepy. Right. And so the poor poet took the went all about the land seeking his sorceress. Meanwhile, back in the castle. Oh, darling. Oh, yes, dear one. Don't you think our daughter is old enough to get out of the tower yet? I don't know. Has she grown old and hideous yet? I hardly think so. Then I'm not letting her out. But, darling, we've got to let her out sometime. Oh, yes, right. But not until I've negotiated her hand in marriage. I'm dealing with King Ulrich the Bat. Oh yes, the one from the kingdom to the north. No, that's Horace the Fifth. Ulrich the Bat is two kingdoms to the south by south. Are you sure? 
What shirt? I sent him a missive. Oh, very good. What's a missive? You know a letter. Duh. Oh, quite nice. He's offered up his son, sir, saddle so on the cure. Saddle so? He does a lot of riding. <laughs> but anyway, the boy is perfectly thrilled with the idea of marrying our daughter. And the marriage will combine us with the kingdom to the south by southwest. You said the kingdom to the south by southeast. No, I did. You most distinctly did. Are you sure? What? Oh, oh, I suppose I'd better consult the map, hadn't I? And so the king and queen must marry to their daughter. In the meantime, Mr. Flamel was high and low about the land of her treasure, but he couldn't find her. That's because I had all the magic folk removed. All except for one. What? That's right. From the very end of the land, there lived an ancient associate called Edward of the Eggheaded. Ha <laughs> ha! That old man! She couldn't <laughs> cast a spell with a rod in her ear. Nevertheless, she's the last associate left in the kingdom. Ha! Eggheaded first, that is he. Now you'll never get my daughter out of the tower. You are inverting the egghead? Exactly. I seek a beautiful babe hidden away in a large, dark tower. How exciting! But what do you expect from me? I seek a way to get into the tower. Example? Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe you could turn me into an animal or something. An animal? An excellent idea. I'll extract a potion. But first, let me examine you. Okay. What? You, I was an excellent candidate for an exotic bird. Yes, a bird. I could fly to the top of the tower, the princess could kiss me, and then I changed back into myself. Wait just a second. Why do you expect you can escape the spell? Because you're a sorceress and that's what you do? Your explanation is quite extraordinary, but I cannot guarantee an escape from the animal. You mean? I can change you, but you can't expect to change back. But true love will always offer her escape, for love is lovely, and she is the most beautiful princess in the world. And in fact, I think she's the most beautiful princess, that she will change me back. Oh, extraordinary. <coughs> Do you really think so? Yes. It's the most extraordinarily bad poetry I've ever heard. Forget it. Change me quickly. And so the old sisters raised her magic wand and muttered the magic words. Exactly. <laughs> and that was her train was I feel kind of weird. It's working. I, I, excellent. Look at me. I'm morphing into an animal. But not into your beautiful bird. A Hebrew wing color, but not feathered bird wings. You giant skin color wings, extending from the back and sides. And instead of growing a crown and feathers, you use slippery scales all over the body. His legs transform, but not into bird legs, but into giant muscular quad legs. And instead of spotting a bee, Drano's mouth with a giant slobbering jowl with enormous teeth. And then Drano drew in a breath of speech, which shines the smoke rising right in his nostrils. The good sir Drano has been transformed, not into a beautiful bird flying at the top of the tower, but into a giant, hideous dragon. What have you done? Oh, it's an intricious error! You gotta change me back! Okay, but that was not extra. Oh, just hurry! Thank <laughs> you.